Welcome to Accounting with Our Bare Hands, a series of short videos on the mechanics of cost accounting. This is the third in a series of five videos on standard costing. The topic of this one, direct labor variances. Uh, for this and the remaining uh, two videos, we will be looking at an example of a company that uh, will grade essays for a price. So the, uh, a, a teacher will send essays in and pay for the page. Uh, the business itself has a budget where they expect that they are going to grade 100,000 pages over the period at a direct labor cost of a million dollars. Uh, they'll have 50,000 uh, labor hours devoted to grading. And uh, uh, they will uh, then uh, have their variable and fixed overhead. And as is usual in a budget, the variable overhead is $2 per, uh, per the driver unit, which in our case is going to be direct labor hours. And fixed overhead is budgeted simply as a lump sum. Uh, because, of course, the amount of fixed overhead we have, by definition, will not vary according to how much we grade. And by the way, uh, if you're thinking that seems like uh, uh, a lot of time to grade a page, maybe you want to think of that as a whole essay. But uh, grading, grading pages can take a long time if it's done well. OK, so these are the budgeted numbers. And we uh, underlying these numbers are some performance standards. Uh, and let's just look at uh, a couple of them here that, that, we, uh, that are going to be relevant to direct labor, which is the first thing we care about. Uh, one thing we can see is that if we are spending a million dollars on 50,000 labor hours, well, a million divided by 50,000 is $20 an hour. So let's just write that here, that the labor cost is $20 per hour. Uh, we are grading 100,000 pages during those, uh, those uh, 50,000 hours. So we're saying that it's going to take 1 half point five hours per page. So these are performance standards. They're saying how, uh, really, this tells us how much it should cost to grade a single page, $20 an hour times half a page, uh, times, sorry, uh, half an hour per page is uh, going to give us $10 for each page that is graded. OK. Uh, now, what actually happened? What actually happened is we thought, you know, we budgeted for 100,000 pages. We actually uh, graded 110,000 pages. Our labor cost was uh, 1,320,000, and we used 60,000 direct labor hours. Later on, we'll talk about the variable and fixed overhead, but the topic of this video is strictly uh, with labor. So let's just look at labor, and let's do some comparisons here. Uh, so we thought that our labor cost would be $20 an hour. And now we look at this 1.32 million, and we can ask, uh, was our labor rate per hour higher or lower? Well, 1.32 million divided by 60,000 is actually $22 an hour. Okay, So we spent a couple dollars an hour more on labor than we thought we would. Now, we can also ask, uh, did we use, you know, we were supposed to use half an hour a page. How did we do on that? Well, you know, you can see here that it, at 110,000 pages, if we had actually used half an hour, well, then it would have been, uh, you know, we actually would have used only 55,000 hours instead of 60. Okay, so we're a little over. 0.5 here. Uh, it, it took more 
uh, hours than it should have by 5,000. Okay, so uh, I would, that's not going to be, I'll just put 0.5 plus there to show we're a bit over. The question is, how can we use a standard costing system to account appropriately uh, in a way that is going to shout out at us at the end of the period uh, or any time we compile our statements, you spent too much money per hour on labor and you used too many hours per page. Right? We want our accounting system to make that extremely visible, extremely visible to our managers. So how are we going to do this? Well, what we're going to work toward is creating a cost of goods sold statement that looks like this. And when we're done with the fifth standard costing video, we will have filled this out completely. We're going to capture our unadjusted cost of goods sold. This is just the sum of the costs of grading every page. Uh, we're going to uh, have this reflect only the standard cost, what it should have cost us to grade the 110,000 pages that we graded. And then we are going to adjust cost of goods sold with variances that when we have a cost overrun will increase uh, cost of goods sold. When we go under the budget, that is when we do something more cheaply than the budget said, uh, we're going to have a credit that reduces cost of goods sold. Uh, so all of these adjustments, as you'll see, we ended up uh, going more over than under. So our adjusted cost of goods sold is significantly higher than our unadjusted. What's important here is that by identifying all of our variances right on the uh, income statement as adjustments to cost of goods sold. We're putting them where everyone will notice them on the income statement. We aren't tucking them in some inventory account where it won't hit income till later and where cost overruns make it seem like we're richer rather than poorer. Okay? So that's going to be our goal right now. We're only going to focus on identifying the direct labor cost, standard cost that will be part of unadjusted cost of goods sold, and the two direct labor variances that reflect that we used too many hours and paid our workers too much per hour compared to the budget. To represent this, uh, we're going to add a new little uh, graphical trick to our, uh, to our repertoire here. You've seen the T account and you've seen the Queen's Cross. Uh, you've seen uh, the two-stage costing pools. Uh, all of those are very nice, useful drawings. Uh, here's a new one. I call it the Variance Crown, and it looks like this. Actually, I'm going to do this again to give myself more space on the top. It looks like this. Okay, so what we're going to have on the top left is the amount that we actually incurred, right? How much uh, how many dollars of resources did we use up? This is going to end up being our credit to wages payable. On the far right, we are going to have the applied amount. How much are we putting into inventory? Now, uh, let's start with the applied amount. Actually, let's start with the incurred amount, because that's really easy. How much did we actually pay our workers? We paid them $1.32 million. That's how much we're going to have to credit wages payable. But that is not how much we are going to put into inventory uh, as people grade, because we're using a standard costing system. Standard costing systems apply costs at standard. According to our budget, 
every page that we grade should cost uh, $20 an hour for half an hour. So we graded 110,000 pages. So what we're going to apply here is 110,000 times that half an hour per page times the $20 standard cost per page. Okay, that's how much, or I'm sorry, per standard cost per hour, and so that's going to be one uh, one million one hundred thousand dollars. That's going to be our debit to work in process. Now we've got a problem, right? You can see that uh, that we have uh, we're going to debit work in process one point one million, but we've credited wages payable. I added an extra zero here. I apologize for that. We uh, debited. Uh, sorry, we credited cash, 1.32 million. Let me just do this. I, that's going to bother me the whole video long. So I'll just redo this. Okay, so now our entry is going to be out of balance. What we need to do is we need to identify the variance okay, that is going to uh, make our whole entry balance. We are over by $220,000. That's going to end up on the bottom left of our Queen's Cross showing an increase to cost of goods sold. But we're actually going to make it a bit more complicated than that. We are going to split. We are going to split that two hundred and twenty thousand dollars into two parts, and the reason is because there are two components to our overrun. We used a little more than half an hour a page, and we spent. Two dollars too much per hour of labor. And so we're going to want to set up separate variances that will capture this, these price and quantity effects. You might find it useful just to look quickly at uh, something like this. If we think about the total cost uh, of, that, we, uh, that we should have spent, right, we can make this a rectangle where what we should have spent, right, it should have been, uh, here's our standard quantity, and here is our standard price. So it should have been uh, $20 times the uh, 55,000 hours. Okay, that's what it should have cost us, and you remember from your elementary school math that uh, the product of two numbers is uh, a rectangle, right? The area of this rectangle represents the cost that we should have incurred to grade those 110,000 pages. The cost we actually incurred, and I'll use another color for this, right? The cost that we, uh, I guess, uh, let's use blue. The cost we actually incurred is actually uh, more like this, okay? Because uh, the actual price was 22, and the actual quantity was 60,000 hours. And so the amount that we spent is a bigger rectangle than the amount we should have spent. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to say, look, it's pretty clear that uh, that this part here. Right, this is actually due to the price, okay? Because we spent two dollars too much. So if you look at this area here, that's because we spent two dollars too much for each one of these sixty thousand hours, and uh, this part here.
This is a quantity effect. The size of this rectangle uh, right here is because we use 60,000 hours instead of 55,000 uh, and we just multiply this by the $20 per hour we should have spent and that is telling us how much uh, we, how, you know, how much of the total cost overrun is because we used labor inefficiently rather than paying too much per hour. So when we come back to our variance crown here, and now you can see it looks a little bit more like a crown. We're going to use a split point that is the actual quantity of labor we used times the standard price. Now, if you think about the applied amount here, this is the, the standard uh, quantity that we should have used per units produced, squap up, times the standard price for each of those hours. This you can break down and say, oh, well, how much did we incur? That's the actual quantity times the actual price. <coughs> so now that we have uh, the actual quantity and actual price here, you know, if you subtract these two, actual quantity times actual price minus actual price times standard price, well, what is the difference between those? That's the actual quantity times the actual price minus standard price. So this is really just the size of that rectangle that I drew for you a moment ago, right, uh, right here. And if we take the differences between these two, this is the actual quantity times the standard price. Uh, here we have the standard quantity per units produced, right, since that's 110,000 at uh, half an hour per unit. Uh, if we take this difference, then this is the uh, standard quantity, or I'm sorry, this is the uh, standard price times the actual quantity minus the standard quantity given how much we produced. Okay? Uh, now we have two, right, we've broken this full 200 and, uh, uh, sorry, 200 and uh, $20,000 into two parts. This is what we call the uh, direct labor rate variance because here's our rate difference, actual price times standard price. This is the direct labor efficiency variance because it's the actual quantity minus the standard quantity that's really determining how big that is. And now if we look at the actual quantity that we used, that was 60,000 hours at the standard price of 20. So how much is this full amount here? That's 1, 200, Oh, oh, oh. So now if we take the difference, right, what do we have? We've got $120,000. And I'm going to call this, I'm going to put a U there because it's an unfavorable difference. We incurred more than our split point. And here we have another 100000 also unfavorable because we incurred 100000 uh, I'm sorry, the split point is 100,000 more than what we applied. So if you want, you can think of this as basically being under-applied direct labor. We only applied 1.1 million. We incurred 1.32. We use this split point here to divide the total difference into the rate variance and the efficiency variance that reflect the two different reasons we spent too much. We're almost done. We just need to now make our debits and credits. Let's create our Queen's Cross. 
we're going to start with a credit to wages payable. That credit is going to be the amount we actually incurred of 1, 3, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0. We are not going to put that full amount into work in process. Okay. Instead, we're only going to put the amount it should have cost us, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And now we need to balance these, uh, this entry with our direct labor rate variance and our direct labor efficiency variance. And we can just read these right off here. We've got 120,000 and 100,000. Both debits, both reflecting. We had a cost overrun. Both numbers that are going to end up, right, we're going to credit these accounts and put the dollars into cost of goods sold eventually. And that is why we are going to end up having cost of goods sold go up by 120,000 because we spent 22 bucks instead of 20 for every hour of labor. And cost of goods sold is going to go up by 100,000 because we used 60,000 hours when according to our budget, we should have been able to do that much work in only 55,000. So uh, when we come back in the next videos, we'll take a look at variable overhead and then fixed overhead. Hope to see you there. Bye-bye.